conference. Uh, Mayor Ford wanted to speak to you, his arch supporters, and to the citizens too, and to the media about what his plans are. And to thank you, first of all, to thank you for your your support. And uh, I mean, words can't express. And I think what we did was a good thing. We have to keep working to help make our city better. Uh, and we wish May for the very best. Yes. And uh, I, I think God knows what to do. And I think this isn't the plan. So we have to support the plan. So with further ado, I'd like to introduce <coughs> our mayor, Johnny Ford. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> I'm just delighted uh, to have my wife Joyce with me. Let's give her a hand. And Council Lady Whitehead. Yes. Let's give her a round yes. of applause. And the Honorable Luth Luther Curry uh, representing his wife and himself. Yeah. <laughs> his wife was successful in uh, winning the council seat, and uh, Chief Curry uh, serves as chairman of our racing commission. And to all of you, as I go around uh, the room, uh, Felix, uh, let's give him a hand. Reverend John, Jorge, and Johnny. Debbie, what would, could I say without you? And uh, <laughs> Ms. Lucida, Donna, where are you? Mildred, and all of you, Mrs. Yeah, Knight. Yeah. And to, to all of you, uh, just happy to have Orrin and all of you, Saladin, and uh, uh, I'm just. Uh, so, so thankful to all of you. But what I wanted to do today was say thank you to our citizens for allowing me to serve as their mayor. Uh, it is an honor to serve as mayor of Tuskegee, Alabama, the home of Tuskegee University, the pride of the swift growing south. Did I say that right? <laughs> it really uh, is a great honor and um, it has been an opportunity for me uh, over the the last 32 years as mayor and uh, six years as, as your state legislator to serve the people. And then even before then as the executive coordinator of the Tuskegee Model Cities program and, and of course uh, continuously with the World Conference of Mayors, the African American uh, Mayors Association, the Alabama Conference of Black Mayors, the Alabama League of Municipalities, the National Policy Alliance and all of these organizations, the Historic Black Towns and Settlements Alliance, uh, all of these organizations in some way, uh, they have enabled us to help uh, people not only in this city, in this state, in this nation and the world, but also to help Tuskegee, mm -hmm. Alabama. And so today I wanted to uh, take this opportunity uh, to say that uh, uh, Tuskegee will always be my home, uh, our home, uh, as well as uh, the Cambridge home as well. We are blessed to have two homes. But the point is, my heart is in Alabama and in Tuskegee, and I will continue to work for Tuskegee. I'll continue to be involved uh, in, with the Community Action Agency, helping the poor, Miss. Uh, Mrs. Harrison and I serve on that board together. The Mental Health Agency supporting uh, those who need special care, the mentally uh, retarded and those who need rehabilitation. Also as a member of the board, uh, vice chair of the CSHA Board of Directors, which uh, is responsible for developing so many housing and other uh, economic development projects here. Uh, in this community and throughout Alabama and the Southeast, CSHA is, uh, has, has a great footprint. Uh, so I'll, I'll continue to be involved in all of that. Uh, I've also been in touch with the Hillary campaign and uh, uh, Ms. Smiley, as you know, that's, uh, that's, that's important to us. Uh, Teresa Smiley, let's give her a hand. Yeah. She's worked with the uh, Democratic Party, both uh, she and Felix have been leaders at the Democratic level, but as you know, uh, uh, the, the election of Hillary Clinton as the next President of the United States of America is very, very important. Yes. And uh, the campaign, uh, uh, we have reached out to each other and I've been in touch with them and of course they already have a, a schedule of things they would like for us to do. Uh, 
uh, across the country and particularly mobilizing other mayors um, uh, in America for Hillary. And so um, uh, we'll, we'll be involved in that. But in the meantime, there's work to do over the next couple of months, Mrs. Whitehead. Yes, yes. The first thing that we're going to do is continue to support uh, Chief Kerr in the Racing Commission and Milton McGregor in the reopening of Victory Land. That is going to happen. Well, those who may wonder whether or not it's going to happen, it's going to happen, right, Chief? Yes, sir. And the date is the 13th at 2 o'clock. Right. And uh, Mr. McGregor uh, would want me to, and I'll give Chief an opportunity as well to invite everyone to come out uh, for the reopening of Victory Land. That's important because it is a business uh, that benefits the entire community, not just uh, shorter, but it, 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 it benefits uh, this entire uh, Alabama um, region because Victory Land uh, uh, has the potential to grow. Uh, into a much bigger facility than what it is going to start with in the reopening. They will grow as the market expands. But you know what? What we have going for us is the interstate. Hmm. We're located on I-85. And uh, to those uh, facilities back in the woods in Montgomery County and over in Ritomka, uh we have the best location. Yes, and I'm convinced right. that uh, people are going to come from miles around. Yes. And so if you've not already applied for a job, if you're interested in working at Victory Land, please do so. And uh, feel free to use me as a reference. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, any of those of you who uh, wow. may wish to work, because we want people working, right? That's <laughs> right. what right. people want to work and take care of their own family responsibilities. Uh, we work just as hard for Victory Land as we did for that Haller plant right across the street. See all those cars? Uh, over there at that Haller automobile plant. Mm -hmm. Well, that's part of our work too because we're the ones who negotiated with the South Koreans to, to land that plant for Macon County. Uh, and so any business, people say, well, why do you work so hard for Victory Land? Well, I worked just as hard mm -hmm. for the automobile plant I as I did right. uh, mm -hmm. for Victory Land. We worked yeah. hard and we worked smart. Mm -hmm. sure. you know, we got the South Koreans mm -hmm. to invest and we're going to um, continue to do that. Now, I'm very interested in the gaming industry, and uh, I'm going to, in the future, uh, spend some time uh, in that area because Alabama has yet to realize its potential in the gaming industry. What sure. do I mean? Sure. We cannot be satisfied until the people of Alabama have a chance to vote on full-fledged gaming in this state. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? I mean, in order for us to compete with Mississippi and other areas, we need to have uh, poker, we need to have blackjack, we need to have all of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was in the legislature the last time, I tried to get that passed too. Uh, but the, uh, what's the uh, Reverend, what's his name, his religious group caught it, and so I was not <laughs> able to get it passed. But I, there were a total of three bills that I offered in the legislature. Uh, and one was a simple bingo bill, the other one called for everything, and then of course the one that we finally got passed while they were concentrating on the other two. But the point is, um, I'm very interested in the Alabama legislature, either the Senate or the House, because uh, depending upon what uh, uh, Senator Beasley does, I hope he will run for governor. Uh, because uh, as Democrats, we need someone, to, uh, a Democrat, uh, I think, uh, because it's clear what the Republicans have done in the state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, if Beasley uh, decides to run, and I hope he does, we're going to keep uh, encouraging him. The last time I saw him, um, uh, we talked about it again. And of course, uh, uh, I don't know what's going to happen there. But at any rate, uh, uh, if he does, that leaves that Senate seat uh, available, and of course, uh, the House of Representatives. As you know, I served in the House of Representatives before. So uh, the point is, either um, serving in the legislature or in government, uh, in governmental relations, I want to work because I think I have the ability uh, to work with people across the aisles, and you've got to be able to work with Democrats and Republicans to get something done, to get something passed. That's what I did in order to get the first 
constitutional amendment allowing bingo to be played electronically in the state of Alabama. We did that. Mm -hmm. And we did it with a coalition of Democrats and Republicans mm -hmm. working together. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I don't think that we need to be satisfied in Alabama until the people, one, have a chance to vote on it, and number two, vote on not just electronic bingo, but the full array of gaming so that Alabama can compete with Mississippi mm -hmm. because Mississippi is still getting a lot of our money because they have more to offer. They have more than just the electronic bingo. So uh, I'll, I'll be, um, um, you know, working here locally to do what we have to do here locally, working with Hillary as well on a national level, but also looking at the legislature as one of our options for the future. Mm. Uh, what I'd really like to do is be, a, be an ambassador. Why? Because, uh, as you know, I'm the founder of the World Conference of Mayors for Life, and uh, the international arena uh, is my backyard whether we're dealing with the Chinese or the Japanese or the South Koreans or whoever, uh, when it comes to international affairs, uh, I believe that is one of our strong uh, backgrounds and our, our suits. So we're ready for the world mm -hmm. uh, in terms of expanding the, the Conference Mondiale des Mayors, which is the World Conference All of right Mayors, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the historic Black Towns and Settlements Alliance. There's some 1,400 cities uh, that got their start through the inspiration of Booker T. Washington and were it not for Booker T. Washington, many of these towns like Grambling and Prairie View and, uh, and Patrick, I have to mention uh, Grambling because uh, uh, Booker T. Washington sent Adams, what was his name? Your Charles. Charles Adams to become the first president of Grambling University, but uh, we have Prairie Review, we have Grambling, uh, all of these uh, towns and historic black colleges, all of that grew out of the, the Washington Adams movement that started right here in Tuskegee. Uh, Tuskegee, we have Tuskegee, Alabama, but we also have Tuskegee Institute, which started out as a, a historically black town. Mm -hmm. And it was the model for Gramlin. It was the model for Prairie View and all of these other towns that grew up around historic black colleges and black colleges grew up around these towns. And so I, I'm honored to serve as the president of this organization, which um, has five founding cities, but uh, Mrs. Harrison also serves on the board and Ms. Robinson uh, is, our, is our point person on all of this who keeps us on course uh, 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 on all of this. So there is much work to be done, but now specifically um, we will, Mrs. Whitehead, in your district, right. give full attention now to Exit 38. 38 yeah. For those folks who don't think it's going to happen, mm -hmm. we're here. It's going to happen, right, Mrs. Whitehead? Yes, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, yes, and that uh, now that uh, they have cleared the, the infrastructure, they, um, the bulldozers have cleared the intersection, Kish, once he comes back in the country, will be ready to begin construction on the hotel. Ooh, the hotel. Yes. Uh, and of course Jeff Potter uh, has his uh, uh, hospital stay behind him and he is healthy and ready to go and uh, his goal is to develop one of the finest and you see the kind of work that Jeff Potter does, right? Yeah. If you go up to, what, what do you call it, the ski mart? Uh, <laughs> Grub, Grub Mart, that's what it is. It's one of the best. It, it is a beautiful service station and food and chicken. Good fried and chicken. Yeah, it, it, it is. But it is a quality place. And that was just a, a training uh, opportunity for him. But he's looking forward to building uh, with Shell a 24-7, uh, second to none, service station, service center, convenience store with a huddle house and Greyhound bus station and all of that in one complex. And uh, on just yesterday I was talking to uh, Captain Dees, uh, Saladin was with me, we stopped by Captain Dees in Montgomery, there's a gentleman who owns about six or seven of these Captain Dees throughout and, and uh, we, we uh, continue to discuss bringing a Captain D's to Tuskegee as well. Oh, right. oh, yeah. but, but, it, but one of the reasons I wanted to have this meeting in this room 
is because I want you to look right across the street <laughs> at that <laughs> sign. Give <laughs> American Delhi. Wings and Philly. And uh, Mr. Patel, um, uh, Dave uh, is scheduled to join us um, in a few minutes, the president. But he's working day and night, and uh, he's going to come over in a, over a minute, and uh, uh, someone can walk over there uh, and, and tell them we're ready for him. Uh, he's going to come and announce the day when he, uh, Saladin, maybe you can walk over there and tell the president I'm ready for him. But he's going to announce today the exact date, date. Mrs. Whitehead, when they'll be ready to open. And if you noticed, um, he painted it in the colors of Tuskegee University. I, uh, uh, Mrs. Oh God, huh? Yeah, yeah, try. yeah, try. yeah. No, they they use the color too, the light colors. I, I like the the regular traditional yeah. ones, but. He meant well, you know, he's... he's, he's <laughs> but it's beautiful though. Yeah, the, the idea and uh, the point is, this is an example of the kind of businesses uh, uh, that we'll have. And then right across the street where you see um, the, the Freeman Pharmacy, I'm in touch with Anthony Coates, uh, who has the uh, Little Caesars in Tallahassee. When you go to Tallahassee, that one right downtown. Yeah, he's very anxious in coming, but that will be the location of the Little Caesars, Chief the Little Caesars Pizza, uh, would be in that corner office, in that corner uh, place in the Freeman's Building, right across the street. And uh, we are now working on a grant, uh, Miss Diane Robinson and Miss Johnny Harrison and those of us who are involved in the historic Black Towns and Settlements Alliance, we're working on a grant application now uh, to the National Park Service. Sandy Taylor, we met with her, Joanne, the other day, and, and off the record, she's giving us her best advice. Dr. Ben Newhouse and others, we're going to put our heads together, and um, either the Historic Black Towns and Settlements Alliance or um, the Tuskegee Repertory Theater, we're going to, we may have several grant applications. But one of the things we want to do is you know the Greyhound bus station downtown mm -hmm. where Sammy Young was shot down in January of 1966 because he had been involved, he had been involved in the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. voting people, registering people. Uh, we want that to become a his, an historic site. Just like Donna, they have taken the old Greyhound bus station uh, in Montgomery oh where the civil rights workers uh, were beat and they've turned that into a national uh, historic site. Mm -hmm. We want to do the same thing for our, our, our uh, bus station and uh, restore it in memory of Sammy but also that will complement. Uh, come on around Doc, uh, we've got a seat for you over here. Um, that will complement uh, very very much the Commodore Studio uh, that's important because we want to concentrate, uh, Mrs. Whitehead, uh, on on the, your district. Um, I say that because the east side of town, you know, uh, Mr. Washington owns that service station, the old Jody service station, and he has plans to refurbish that. And if we can get the Greyhound bus station and, 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 and fix it up, and then with the Commodore studio right across uh, the street, all of that uh, bodes well for that particular area. And then, of course, we have the History Center downtown, and of course we have the Repertory Theater, uh, which is alive with productions. Um, so the downtown area, the old school seafood place, and we're just going to work with our local business people to help revitalize downtown. In other words, over the next couple of months, we want to lay the foundation so that uh, the Haygood administration, and I want to again take this opportunity to uh, congratulate uh, Mr. Tony Haygood as the mayor-elect of our city. Let's give him a hand. Uh, we want to congratulate him and wish him well. And over the next couple of months, we will be laying the foundation uh, so that it will be a smooth transition uh, from the Ford administration to the Haygood administration and we can continue the progress yes. uh, Council Lady Whitehead that we have begun. Right. Um, um, there's an old saying uh, uh, 
Judge Joyce, that pioneers seldom settle. Hmm. What does that mean? It means you may start something. Uh, you may start the trail, mm -hmm. but in terms of selling, it may not happen mm -hmm. when you're there. But if you lay the foundation mm -hmm. so that the work can go on, so that the legacy can uh, continue, that's what it's all about. Uh, improving the quality of life of the people of Tuskegee. That's what it's all about. It doesn't make any difference whether I'm here or someone else, as long as we get the job done. Yeah. So Victory Land is going to happen. Exit 38 is going to happen. Uh, the Wire Road uh, development of $3 million is going to happen. Mr. Patel uh, spoke to him on yesterday, is getting ready uh, to begin his work uh, at uh, the Wire Road exit. I'll be meeting with the state officials before the transition to talk to them again about putting lights at the Wire Road exit. That's important because that exit, too, is a front door to Tuskegee. It is also uh, the exit used by the Auburn University football traffic and uh, the National Tuskegee National Forest. All of that's important to our local economy. It's important to our utilities board, Mrs. Whitehead, because uh, they will uh, be using it, our utility system, that new expansion uh, at Wire Road, at that facility which be a, will be a three-plus million dollar expansion uh, to put in a, a whole new service station there, uh, more pumps, uh, a subway in that complex, and to just put in a first-class convenience store at that exit as well. So we're working on that exit. And then with the mayor-elect of Franklin, uh, Brother Peavy, Reverend Giles, already he and I have talked about meeting with the state uh, within the next month so that we can talk about um, the Utilities Board and the City of Tuskegee and Franklin working together mm -hmm. to run sewage mm -hmm. to Exit 32. You have already seen the work of, of the Patels at Exit 32, that service station. You see how they improved that and made it a very nice facility. Mm -hmm. So you see they believe in doing things uh, first class. Uh, that's the same Patel at Exit 32 that has purchased the property at Wild Road and will be developing that project as well. Okay, so let me conclude by saying this. We want to thank all of you all so much. Uh, I love you all. Uh, we just left a funeral at uh, at uh, one of our churches, uh, no, Sweet Canaan, where a young lady, uh, Jessica Sutton, who worked uh, in our, our campaign, was tragically, uh, uh, she was struck down by a truck and killed uh, on the 23rd. Uh, she had come back to vote, yes. and uh, yes. bless her heart, um, may she rest in peace. And so I, on behalf of all of you, I did have a chance to express our deepest sympathy to the family. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let me just say uh, again, we will be very, very busy over the next few few weeks. Uh, one of the things we want to do now, Mrs. Whitehead, in your district is ask the county to go ahead and now resurface now that uh, Chappie James has, has settled, has had time to settle, right. to go ahead and resurface Chappie James so that we can have a nice street there uh, for Chappie James once again and also to ask the county to go ahead and work to open up Washington Avenue again uh, so that those bridges can be fixed and that can also be made available to uh, the community once again. I want to uh, uh, pause and again thank all of you all so very much for everything that you've done and say that we are prepared and ready to move forward. Uh, Chief Curry, why don't you come around and just say a word, if you would, uh, on behalf of the Racing Commission and uh, reassure everyone that uh, on the 13th, things are going to open up again. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Yes, ever since uh, Mr. McGregor announced in the paper that the Victory Land would be reopening on the 13th of September, a lot of activity has been going around the uh, track. Uh, people are socializing down there more now, and, and the uh, 
employees are coming in for interviews, to, uh, for jobs and orientations and everything. So everything's starting to pick up. And as, and as far as the racing commission, it will certainly help us because when people come in, sometimes they come upstairs also to eat and to feed the horses and, and the dogs on, on salmon cast. We don't have live dogs yet, but on salmon cast. And so uh, everything's starting to look up, and we are excited, and everybody feel real good about it, you know. And we just hope everything work out fine. And as Mr. McGregor says always, say, come on down. <laughs> you can be a winner, too. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Yes, thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, we want to thank Channel 8 for being here, and if you have any questions now. Yeah. Um, uh, would you mind taking back the, okay, the, the yeah, good seat right. with the microphone, if you don't mind? Okay. <laughs> I just had a couple quick things. Three. One, uh, you know, looking back at your time as mayor here at Tuskegee, uh, what, is, what are some of the biggest things that you're most proud of uh, from your time People here? always ask me the single thing uh, that I'm uh, most proud of is, and I have to tell them, it is Booker T. Washington High School. Why? Because many people think, well, that's a school, and they, and they would uh, readily think that that was built by uh, the Macon County Board of Education by itself. No, that was a, a project that was a joint venture and effort of the City of Tuskegee and the Macon County Board of Education. It demonstrates that when agencies work together, look what we can accomplish. Uh, what we did was the Board of Education came to the Macon County, uh, came to the City of Tuskegee and said, as the Macon County Board of Education, we can't do this. Will the city appoint a building authority, uh, an educational building authority, and float the bonds to build this new high school? And sure enough, with Silas Kennedy, and I hope one day we can name uh, something out there in honor of Silas Kennedy, the chairman of the school board. Uh, but I, uh, I, Booker T. Washington High School uh, is, 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 is the one project that I am most proud of. Of course, uh, uh, this is a house that Johnny built for the people of Tuskegee, Alabama, and I'm so happy when I see people use this facility, and we built this facility uh, with a federal grant and uh, a bond issue, so it was not built with local tax dollars. But when you look around this city, this facility, the Go Million Building, uh, Moton Field, which is the home of the Tuskegee Airmen, the Industrial Park, uh, so many millions of dollars. Uh, that went underground to build our water system and our sewer system, and we often talk about it. When I first became mayor, people, people talk about, they say, oh, nothing has been done. Uh, mm -hmm. Tuskegee is in such bad shape. Well, you, sh you should have seen Tuskegee when we first started, All right. uh, particularly in the black community, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, we lived on dirt streets and in the mud and the dust. Mm -hmm. uh, the whites in downtown had public lighting. But in the black community, we had to pay for public lighting. Uh, we had segregation still uh, in terms of the policies were not fair in this city. And so we've come a long way in Tuskegee from dirt streets and no public lighting and, and uh, uh, inadequate park facilities and people not having running water and uh, no indoor toilet facilities. I mean, Tuskegee has come from a long way. So I'm proud of all of that physical development. I'm proud of the, of the two national historic sites that we were able to work together with Tuskegee University to, uh, to accomplish. One, the Tuskegee Institute National Historic Site in 1977, and then in 2009, the Tuskegee Airman National Historic Site. And I still will try to do what I can, perhaps through the Historic Black Towns and Settlements Alliance, to get the VA hospital okay. also declared okay. Donna as a yeah. national historic yeah. site. Why? Because the VA hospital in terms of African American history is to medicine what the airmen were to aviation. It's yes. just that important. Yes. Uh, in 1923, that whole story needs to be told exactly. and retold. Right. And so you, we can get much. that done. And, and also we're going to continue to work to get this house on the hill down here, I think, uh, is the birthplace of Mrs. Rosa Parks, and we need to get that certified uh, as a historic site as well. So when you ask, when I sum it up, what is the thing that I'm most proud of? 
I'm proud of the fact that I was able to actually live through 32 years <laughs> of serving the people and still be able to say I ain't no ways tired. Uh, I don't believe the Lord has brought me this far to leave me now. Yes, and I'm ready for the next challenge. Yes, sir. Yes. To either do it here in Tuskegee or as an ambassador or whatever around the world. I'm ready to move forward. We're supporting you too. I'm a strong believer. I'm a strong believer. It was interesting when I talked to the Hillary people. Boy, they, they already had a schedule of things waiting, you know, uh, for us for us to do um, in terms of the campaign. But the point is, we have work to do here. We're going to have a smooth transition. And let me just say something, too, about the financial challenge facing this city. You know, this financial challenge facing this city is no big thing. You know, when we came into office, Council Lady Whitehead, the city had a $3.9 million internal revenue debt. Uh, it was in, on the verge of going into bankruptcy. So what did we do? We simply uh, did the responsible thing. We went to the Internal Revenue Service, looked them in the eye and said, first of all, we apologize for not doing what we're supposed to do and, and not returning your phone calls and not paying what, but you, first you have to be honest. You know, when you're dealing with officials, you look them in the eye and deal with them. So forgive us. And, and that's what they did. They forgave us $1.4 million. You all remember that. They took it all because I was willing to go and negotiate uh, with them. And then we were able to float a bond issue and pay them all once and for all. So we saved the city from going into financial uh, uh, indebtedness or crisis, and it will be done again. The first thing we need to do, these lawsuits are frivolous. frivolous. The Alabama League of Municipalities stately stands squarely behind this city uh, by stating their position that cities do have the authorization uh, to charge franchises and business license. Now how they do that, there may be some questions in terms of how you do it, but they have the right to do that. And so over the next couple of months, uh, I will be prepared to go on the offense. Those people who file these frivolous lawsuits, we need to counter file. Uh -huh. You file a lawsuit against the city of Tuskegee and the utilities board that, that causes a financial hardship uh, to the citizens and, and, and impact the quality of service that is being provided to the people of Tuskegee, then you need to deal, you need to stand up and fight them in court yeah, right. and do something. Right. If you believe you're right, you can't just sit back and let people just sue you and take, especially with some judge who is political <laughs> yeah. and um, uh, who uh, I believe <laughs> has the best like interest I'm, I'm, I'm like of these is. lawyers from out of town who mm -hmm. don't live here, right. who come here and, and make all the money like and, and run away. So the point I'm stressing here is we have to fight. I don't, I'm not afraid to go into federal court. And I'm not afraid because I've got a judge here. All right. I've, got, I've got justice on my side. All right. so we, and I've got a son who's a lawyer. So, uh, you know, we, we, we're prepared to fight in court if necessary. And I want to thank Chief Curry because, you know, we went into federal court. And if necessary, we'll go into court again. And uh, right now we are dealing with uh, the, the Justice Department and the Alabama Ethics Commission and we are we're continuing to ask them to investigate uh, the Attorney General and everyone else to make sure they just leave us alone. Right. That's all we've ever asked uh, just for Luther Strange and the Governor and everybody, just leave us alone. Right. If you're going to let the Indians play and make money, let us do the same thing. Right. They're using the same machines. Right. Why are you going to discriminate against us? Because we're Macon County? Because we're touch No, 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 no. And if you think we're going to sit back and let that happen, you know, once Victory Land reopens, you let somebody try to come in right, here and close yeah. it down. They're going to have to march over us That's right. first. We right. mean that. Yeah. No, 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 no. We voted for uh, th this privilege and the right to have businesses like, like Victory Land and others, yes, and we're not going to, we don't play now. You know, one thing about it is we're not, we're not scared mm -hmm. you know, of anybody. Amen. We're not afraid of anyone. Amen. Uh, we believe in fighting and standing up for what is 
is right. That's all we're asking, right, right. Chief? That's, That's right. all we're asking. Right. 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 Operate. Right. So to answer your question, what is my proud? <laughs> <laughs> back around. <laughs> I'm proud. Uh, I'm proud of uh, as I said, the school. I'm proud of Victory Land because, as you know, uh, uh, we led the original flight back in 1984. Uh, Chief Curry will tell you uh, oh, yeah. we we had to take our guns when we went down <laughs> short of. Uh, uh, when we were fighting for Victory Land the first right. time, because right. after we did all the work to get Victory Land, uh, I won't say, uh, I won't say it, but folks tried to take it away from us, you know, yeah. we had to fight for it. Uh, but uh, Victory Land, I'm very proud of, and also I'm proud of that Hyundai plant. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm so proud of the Hyundai plant because the South Koreans had already made up in their minds to go somewhere else, and I was able to use the fact that for thirty. 12 years I served on the Board of Trustees of the, of the uh, South Korean University in New York. Helped them to get accreditation. That's part of my international service. And when I was able to relate to them how I had worked with the South Koreans, how, how, how I had helped them, that got their attention. Mm. And all I needed to do was get their attention long enough. And you know if I get your attention, I'll sell you <laughs> right. on Tuskegee. <laughs> and I told and I told them, I, and, and, and at that particular time I was in the Republican Party, so I had all, I said, I, I, said, uh, I had Bob Riley's support. I said, I said, any deal, any other county can give you, we'll beat it. Uh -huh. and, that, and, and sure enough, that got their attention. Because at that time, we had all the support from the, from the governor, so we got millions of dollars to build the infrastructure, the road, and, and that kind of thing. So when you look across, what I'm proud of the fact is on one side of the road, you see Victory Land, and on the other side, you see a Halliplat. I'm the one who took uh, Harold, Harold Powell and John McGowan and Jesse Upshaw uh, to the meeting, and, and, and Smith, uh, who was the chairman of the county commission, we, I took them to the meeting with the South Koreans that led to that plant locating in our plant. So I'm proud of the fact on, Vic on one side of the road is Victory Land and on the other side is the automobile plant. Mm -hmm. And everybody sees that every time you go up and down the road. So I'm proud of that. But most of all, I'm proud of the fact that Tuskegee has come from a mighty, mighty long mighty way. Yes. At the age of 13, I looked through Henderson Park and I peeped through the fence and I could see the little white boys and girls mm -hmm. uh, playing in the public swimming pools. And as black boys and girls, we had to peep through and watch right. them. It was segregated. That's right. I'm proud of the fact that at the age of 13, I said to Carver Lennard and Lonnie Smith, I said, you know, the mayor of this town must be a powerful dude if he can keep us out of this park. <laughs> One day, Carver Lennard, I said to him, and he'll tell you this, he said, I said, one day I want to be mayor of Tuskegee, Alabama, so we can open up this park so that all the children Black and white would be able to swim and play in the parks. And this summer, the swimming pool was open, right? Right. In Tuskegee, Alabama. Thank you very much. Any other questions? I have two, two more quick questions. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One, uh, I know you uh, mentioned that uh, sure. definitely a possibility to go back to the legislature. Sure. Do you plan on staying a Democrat? Would you consider going to be a, a Republican? No, 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 no. My Republican days are over. I just switched over to the Republicans in order to get something passed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah every, everyone knows, everyone knows that story. I, uh, everybody knows that story. I had tried as a Democrat, uh, I, I can I never will forget Don Siegelman was governor, and I'm and I'm and I'm gonna take the time because you need history. This is historic. This conference here, I want to go down in history. Uh, I had uh, I had tried to, I, w I had a, a bill for video gaming in Macon County, right? Uh, Don Siegelman came to me and said, and you remember Governor Siegelman, Teresa came to me and says that. He said, Mr. Representative, if you would hold your bill until I get my lottery bill passed, then I'll support you, okay? So Don Siegelman, Repub uh, governor, the Democratic governor, I held up my bill so that he could put the lottery on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And we tried to talk to him about making sure that uh, colleges, uh, would benefit uh, free 
tuition, that kind of thing. But Felix, we couldn't get him to. Uh, he didn't want. He 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 wanted to, you. Gave him a choice: you either get the lottery or the Pell Grant. Well, black folk and poor students, uh, Dr. Shakir, you know they need they, uh, they need all the money they can get. Pell grants, anything, uh, anything, <laughs> tuition, work, work and whatever, you know. Work study. So consequently, he didn't have the support of Yvonne Kennedy and others and those black guys. And then, uh, and then the commission he uh, would not allow for us to have have appointments made. So at any rate, the lottery failed. Okay, so the lottery fails. Then I go to him and I say, okay, your lottery's failed. How about my bill on gaming for Macon County? Well, not only would, would he not support me, but he came out against my bill. Wow. And, and, and so, and then we had lights for exit 32 and exit 38. You know, see those lights out there now? Mm -hmm. Those lights laid on the ground for two years. I couldn't get him to put the lights up. But at any rate, I had some, some experiences that were not positive. And so when I went to the legislature, I was trying to get some things done. And the, the governor at that time said to me, he said, hey, you switch over to the Republican Party, I'll help you get this $30 million for the Tuskegee Airmen. I said, are you sure? And he was, you know, congressman at that time and then governor. So $30 million for the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site. And we, all the fault we have with Bob Riley, we, we, we have a lot now. But then, uh, we have to just give credit where credit is due. We wouldn't have the Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site, that $30 million, had it not been for him. And, uh, and I agreed to work with him uh, as a part of that deal. Then secondly, you know Tuskegee University gets an appropriation. Tuskegee University had to get 70 votes because it was being treated like it was a private school. Now, uh, Patrick, you know the history of Tuskegee. It, it was founded as a public institution, just like Alabama State and all the others. Uh, but they were being treated like Talladega, Stillman, and some of the other colleges, and that was not right. They needed 70 votes. As a matter of fact, when I was in the legislature the first time, I tried to get the vote, it failed because I couldn't get 70 votes. It's hard to get 70 votes. And so I got, as a, as a, when I was uh, in that party, I got the governor and the attorney general to uh, declare and get, support me to get Tuskegee University the status of state related university. So now it only needs a simple majority just like Alabama State and others to get that, its annual appropriation. And then thirdly, we also got the appropriation increased. So I'm very proud of that. Uh, so uh, those are, and then lastly, uh, the Hyundai plant is the other thing that came out of that. So no, 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 uh, my democratic days, uh, I'll always be a Democrat. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, I, as I said, some people are not flexible enough to, to be when it comes to parties and they, they get very emotional. When, I, uh, when it comes to politics and helping my people, uh, if I can work with an independent to get something done, I'll do it. If I can work with a Republican to get it done, just not Donald Trump, I can get it done. Uh, but uh, no, no, it, it would be a, a, a Democrat that you can count on. Well, I think that'll do it for us. Thank you very much, Mary. Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, did, we all said, did you have any questions? Nothing. Just wanted to uh, know just your final thoughts and how you really want people to uh, look at this next chapter in your life. Well, I, I think I'm looking forward to the future. Uh, our best days are ahead of us. Uh, you know, like they say, that's one good thing about it. Age ain't nothing but a number. Mm -hmm. I feel good. I'm blessed to be alive. and. Uh, uh, I, as long as I have my mind, my health, and my faith in God, I can can do it. You know, I can. Uh, so I'm excited about the future. And um, you know, one of the other things I I do plan to do is um, you know uh, make some money. I uh, mean, because uh, all of these these times I have have used public office to help other people. Um, and, you know, I have a daughter that's you know that. Uh, has a health challenge, bless her heart, I'm going to be giving time for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I don't have to worry about my wife because she has plenty of money, so I don't. <laughs> but, but, so she's good. But, but I'm going to be uh, concentrating on some economic opportunities because I've made a lot of other billionaires uh, around me in projects, and uh, we're going to be uh, investing and, and doing some things business wise as well. Uh, obviously, I've known how to do these things. But uh, when you're in public service, you, you concentrate on helping other people rather than help yourself. But then sometimes uh, uh, as, as you mature in life, uh, you want to begin to take advantage of, of, uh, of investments and, and taking advantage of the economic uh, opportunities that exist. And so uh, I'll be involved in some business enterprises as well. Uh, over the net, over the future, okay? Yes, sir. Thank well, thank you. you so very much. Thank. Give yourselves a hand for sitting through this. I didn't, it, it,